Hey everyone. No. Okay. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Tomek. I uh, work at Unity for more than two and a half years now. I'm part of the Toolsmith team, team, and my team uh, deals with internal uh, test automation tools uh, most of the time. But as a side project, we also did this uh, package called Unity Test Tools. I thought Macs don't break or crash. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. There we go. Um, we did this side project. Uh, we created Unity test tools. And, uh, and uh, I will talk about the test tools today. Uh, but before I start, I would like to uh, propose a little stretching exercise, because I'm really curious about you guys. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, could you raise your hand if you heard about uh, the test tools before? Do you That's impressive. Uh, have you used them? Um, who has experience with tests in general, test automation? OK, that's great. Any managers or leads here? Cool, thank you. Um, it's so awesome to see uh, the growing interest in test automation. I, I would never expect there's going to be so many people here. Uh, so uh, I will talk about the tools, but before I uh, do that, I will uh, say a few words about uh, test automation in general and the co concepts of test automation. Um, and then I hope to uh, get some questions from you in the end. So uh, let me start this talk with a little poem. And it goes like that. 99 little bugs in the code. 99 little bugs in the code. Take one down, patch it around. 117 little bugs in the code. Um, I don't know who wrote it, unfortunately, but I would high five that person. Uh, because it's, um, it depicts very well the, one of the biggest struggles of uh, code engineering nowadays, which is uh, introducing regressions to the code. Um, in my opinion, test automation is mostly about uh, dealing with regressions, avoiding them. It's, it's a way for you to defend yourself against those. And uh, if you don't know what a regression is, a regression is a newly introduced bug that wasn't uh, in the code before. Uh, but besides regressions, uh, there are uh, several other things that come along with test automation. One of them is code quality, um, because when you write automated tests, you're kind of enforced to uh, write uh, to properly architecture your code so it gets uh, properly isolated and decoupled. And in general, the code quality, uh, the quality of your code raises. Um, for me personally, uh, another important thing is the, something I call quality contract. It's a contract, uh, it's a way for me to assure other people that the code I write works as expected. Uh, if someone else, maybe from my team, maybe uh, from another team from my company, picks my code, uh, he can be certain that uh, the code I wrote works uh, as intended, at least uh, as the test uh, show it's supposed to work. Um, and it's for me personally, it's also uh, a nice way uh, to uh, sleep well in the night. I'm not afraid, uh, I'm not concerned that I broke something uh, with my recent commit. Uh, and I don't like to stress, so uh, I, I, I don't think I, I would have a hard time to live without uh, automated tests. Um, it's also important in uh, agile environments or uh, environments with freedom of changes. If, if you have uh, uh, if the culture in your company allows you to change whatever code uh, you want to, uh, it is like that, for instance, at Unity. It's important to have a way to make sure that you, haven't, uh, that you didn't break anything by introducing your changes. Um, and since we, have a lot of, since we have the automated test suits, we can run them often. And that may be important uh, maybe from um, like a business point of view. Uh, because uh, the, the graph you see here, it, it's, uh, it bases on empirical data. It's been uh, proved by, um, by uh, 
many researchers that uh, the cost of introducing of uh, changes to your code raises really quickly in uh, later stages of uh, development of your software development so uh, the earlier you want the earlier you introduce a change in your code the less it will cost you and it raises really quickly and it's uh, very often uh, hidden costs that you may not necessarily be uh, aware of like for instance especially when you ship the code out there to your customer and you want to uh, you want to send a patch to them it involves so many people in the middle so many uh, logistics and it all costs, it's all, it's all money, it's all uh, people's times and uh, the, the, the time they spend to provide to install the patches, to, uh, to uh, patch the systems um, they acquired from you. Um, so, but Unity was uh, originally built for uh, writing games, right? So uh, you can, of course, write amazing other programs in it but we're talking about games here so how about uh, so what about testing games a few years ago if you asked someone if, when I was asking people how they see testing games they would pretty often say that they have no idea how to do it or even worse they would say that it's uh, not possible not feasible uh, and they just they just declined to do it and uh, I, I agree that it's not easy. It's a difficult task. It can be a difficult task, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. It doesn't mean it's, you shouldn't do it. Quality in games is important as much as uh, it's important in, uh, in general when you write code. Um, and games might be considered uh, slightly more sophisticated software because they touch many different areas like networking, graphics, audio, uh, they need to keep up with certain performance level but in the end I think it's just software like any other software it can be tested and it should be tested because quality matters um, and I'm, I'm super happy to see that the industry is turning towards test automation there are more more and more people asking about how to write tests for their games uh, there is even a conference dedicated to games. Uh, it's called Games QA and Localization. It's actually happening next week in Barcelona. Um, and it's, a really, it's really cool to see that uh, people are getting involved and they do want to uh, write automated tests for their games. Um, in test automation, there's this concept introduced by Mike Kohn. Uh, it's called the Automation Pyramid. And it uh, shows an effective uh, test automation strategy uh, at different levels. Uh, it's basically about having, uh, building your test suits uh, starting from uh, low level tests, uh, unit tests. And uh, they should be the, the tests you, sh uh, you should have the most of. And on top of them, you should build integration tests that are a bit higher level tests. And uh, they touch uh, more code. Uh, cover more paths and on top of that you should have you could have uh, some UI tests that are the touching the most code paths but there are also uh, the least scalable tests um, so if you go down towards the pyramid uh, what you get is you get execution time the unit tests are the fastest to execute are the easiest to maintain are the easiest to debug on the other hand if you go up in the pyramid you lose scalability, but what you get is uh, the, 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 it's the easiest to alter such tests because you can pretty much imitate user inputs uh, and the code doesn't have to be testable. But uh, it's super hard to maintain such tests and it's uh, super hard to debug them. So, but I'm not saying that it's, uh, one test are better than the other ones. Uh, there is a purpose for every test on every level. But you should keep in mind the, the, the what can go wrong with having, for instance, uh, only UI tests. So the Unity Test Tools package, um, it's been released around one and a half years ago. It's uh, available on the Asset Store. Um, and it contains three main modules. The first one is the Unit Test Runner. Uh, then there is the Integration Test Runner for writing higher level tests. 
and there is a semi-automation tool called uh, Assertion Component. The integration test runner comes with a, a utility for running your tests on the platform, and, uh, and the s s a utility for assertion uh, is also included for, for getting an overview of the assertions you have on your scene. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to show you uh, how the tools work uh, in the editor. Well, if I have some time left in the end, I will do, but um, I'm afraid uh, that I won't. Uh, but I'll quickly talk you through those uh, uh, frameworks. So the unit test runner is simply an integration of n unit framework um, that we took and we made the UI for it. The advantage of it uh, is that you can use internal Unity, a not internal, but Unity API in your tests, which is not available if you try to write, if you try to run tests, for instance, from an IDE like Visual Studio or MonoDevelop. You can, uh, if you try to instantiate a game object uh, outside of Unity, uh, you would get an exception uh, that say, saying that this, uh, it's an equal exception, which means the bindings between the managed layer and the native layer are, are simply not there. Um, so this is the advantage you get by using the unit test runner. But in the end, it's just uh, it's nothing more than you would expect from a typical unit test runner. Uh, the integration tests runner, uh, you can write so-called scene-based tests. You pretty much build the, the tests uh, as you would build a typical Unity scene. Um, and it's used for testing uh, integration or interaction of your Unity content. Uh, it can be built as a player. It can be run uh, on the platform uh, you're developing your games for. And uh, there is a utility, the, the platform runner, that, is, uh, that you can use for that. The assertion component is uh, used for setting invariants of your code. An invariant is a property that you expect never to change. Um, and uh, it's a powerful and a flexible way of setting up uh, assertions in your code and making sure that certain states uh, are valid over a period of time. Um, it's extensible, extendable, and uh, uh, the cool thing about this is that it works with legacy code because it doesn't require much stability from code. You can just pretty much take your project and slap some assertions on your code and hit play and let it test itself. Um, all those frameworks are... Uh, it's possible to run them from a command line. As a result, you will get an uh, XML file with results. It's uh, formatted with in an unit format, and uh, it's super easy to integrate it with uh, most of the continuous integration systems because most of them have uh, plugins for parsing the, this format. And um, and what else is there about the unit uh, about the package? So, as you probably know, because most of you have heard about it, it's available in the asset store. Um, it's also hosted on Bitbucket, uh, where you can get this, the, the latest source code. Uh, we try to update it once in a while, but the al always the latest source code is available on Bitbucket on Unity Technologies uh, profile. Uh, it's also where, we, where you can report bugs, and you can uh, discuss new features, for instance, propose new features, and uh, we can have discussions there. But uh, you can also use forums if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, uh, there is also a thread on, the f on Unity forums about the test tools. Um, so feel free to write there as well. Uh, one of the new things uh, in the editor that got shipped in uh, the 5.1 version is the assertion library. Uh, if you're familiar with like, native assertions from uh, C++ or pretty much, I think, any language has uh, uh, some assertion methods, it's simply a way of checking um, uh, some assertions from the code. Uh, but we implemented it so it's uh, hooked in the, with the Unity console instead of throwing exceptions, which are not supported by all the platforms. Uh, you will get a, it will be logged in the console. It's a very, it's, uh, you can find it in, under unity engine.assertions namespace. There's a bunch of, uh, uh, bunch of methods there. And there's also this extension class under the uh, unity engine assertions must namespace, which is simply a wrapper for the assert class uh, in the form of method extensions. 
those methods are conditionally compiled out when you do uh, release builds. It's controlled by unity underscore assertions uh, define, which you can use uh, in your own code as well. If you wish, you can also force uh, include it in the final builds by manually building the player from script. Uh, there is a build flag option available for that. Uh, and it looks like that. The, the first example, the top line, uh, is just simply checking if the health, the, it's saying that the health should never be equal to zero. Uh, the next line, it's uh, doing exactly the same, but it's just different syntax. It's the must syntax, which personally I prefer over the original one, uh, because it's much more readable, in my opinion. It will just read that health must not be equal to zero. and. Uh, for people not necessarily that, that not necessarily deal with code, I think it's a much better option. Mm, so uh, what else is happening out there? Uh, we're doing native integration of the tools. Uh, as the first step, we're integrating the unit test runner. As you might have noticed, maybe on the roadmap, it's, uh, it should be out in 5.3. We're on a very good path. So. Um, uh, we're pretty confident it's going to go out in, the, in, in that version. Um, we hope to, by integrating it natively, we will increase awareness of, uh, test, of the possibilities of test automation uh, in Unity, uh, which I personally hope will uh, give us more resources to work on the tools, which will uh, make the tools even better. Um, subsequently, we will... Uh, integrate the rest of the tools from the package and try to make the experience uh, uh, with them even better. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, Marek Turski, he's, uh, he's working on the MBT model-based testing framework. I, I won't uh, go into details what model-based testing is here, but it's, uh, it's a super nice way of uh, testing your uh, code. You pretty much build a model of your uh, uh, of your uh, code, and you generate tests automatically based on that model, uh, which which is happening automatically, uh, which is super cool because you don't. It's much easier to maintain such suit, such such test suit. Um, so, this is something we're working on. I uh, can't promise on any dates or uh, or uh, uh, when it's gonna be out, but uh, just to raise your interest in it, uh, I'm mentioning it. Uh, if you're into test automation, you might, what, you might find interesting a framework uh, that is called Strange uh, IOC, Strange Inversion of Control, which was written by Mark Tannenbaum and Will Corvin, which are currently working at Unity as well, but they, uh, they're developing this framework independently. So uh, you should give it a look. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. and uh, If you like it, give them some feedback. They will love it. Um, what we're focusing as well is the cooperation with uh, different companies, small studios and big studios. Uh, we try to get, uh, we try to work with them and see how they approach test automation, how they try to deal with it, uh, what tools do they use, if they find the test tools useful, uh, what other tools they would find useful, and. Um, if you guys uh, want to share your experience, please do, yeah, because that's the, the most val valuable thing we can get. Uh, you, this is uh, the way you can contact me. I'm available in different social medias. You can find me on Twitter. I'm also active on forums, of Unity forums. Uh, that's my email and Skype address. Feel free to write me. Uh, I will do my best to answer you as soon as possible. Uh, and uh, I think that's pretty much it, what I have prepared for now. Um, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer you. Uh, well, thank you.
Hi, so I was wondering, is there any plan to integrate the testing tools in the cloud service? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like when? <laughs> I don't know the details. You would need to ask the cloud team, but I, I know there is a plan. Uh, it's, it's actually, uh, there is something working. I've tried it, uh, but, uh, but I don't know any agenda. I, d I don't know their agenda, but yes. Okay, thank you. Hi. Uh, are there any plans to support UI uh, test automation? Um, like with, uh, for mobile devices, for example, with UI automation? I'm afraid before the new input system comes out, uh, we won't be focusing on it. Um, but we also... Uh, we, so um, the reason we don't have any record playback uh, framework out there is that we believe that it's as much as we, as we could see value in such framework, mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we know that it's, it wouldn't be stable enough at, uh, in current state and it would lead, uh, it could lead for, uh, it could make people write tests that are not necessarily the most stable one and uh, we just don't want to do that. We don't want to uh, provide uh, frameworks to people that wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't give nice experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to do all what I can to, to, with the new input system to make it testable, make it mockable, and, uh, and give you the, the option to, uh, to have such framework uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you know when this input system will come? Sorry? Do you know when this input system will come? You need to check the roadmap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in terms of testing internal functions uh, with the unit tests, uh, because the unit tests are actually in the editor assembly, uh, it can be hard to test uh, internal functions. Uh, are there any plans to support that better, or is there a workaround? Uh, you mean internal functions in your uh, runtime assembly, yeah. runtime code? Um, I haven't thought about it, um, but it's something I could look into. <coughs> if, you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, just write it on the forums or on Bitbucket, and I would be happy to give it a look. Okay. It could probably be a simple solution uh, by enabling, for instance, uh, the visibility to make the assembly visible, internals for the editor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the issue with that is sometimes you'll accidentally rely on something. If you're doing editor code somewhere else. Yeah, can, I understand. But yeah, OK. Thanks. Just uh, one final question, the guy over here. Hi. I just wanted to say that um, we're really glad that you made your unit test tools because we use it all the time. Um, but I also wanted to ask whether is there a plan to Unity have a, like a dedicated team to this now, like you guys? Because um, it would be really cool if we could submit um, bugs or just um, proposals. For instance, I hope that when uh, Unity test tools gets um, integrated into Unity, the problems with icons disappearing would go away, which mm -hmm. we get a lot <laughs> when we update Unity versions. And for instance, test folding and stuff like this is just like little mi minor things that I would assume would just go away. And speed, which is kind of slow for us um, sometimes. <coughs> yes, sorry. Uh, so at the moment, uh, it's pretty much only me working on this. So it's super hard for me to keep up with all the changes. Uh, but. Like that's one of the main reasons we I'm pushing towards the integration is to raise the awareness and it's I think it's it's all about getting feedback from you and uh, showing that you really care about it and you need it and uh, only by that we will uh, like I will be able to convince uh, others to create to form a team like a proper team to work on this. 
Well, thank but you. It's, 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 it's awesome to see so many of you here. I know this is a really huge step uh, forward towards the test tools uh, future development.